Hello, welcome back. Today I have the Peak Tech. Uh, it's the 4085. It is a signal generator and it's also a frequency counter. And the signal generator goes up to 15, 16, maybe even 17 megahertz. And the frequency counter should go up to 2.7 gigahertz. And uh, I have now the ability uh, to test that here with the WBSG1 that goes up to 8 gigahertz. So we can uh, try to push this limit. Um, I already asked for the schematic diagram uh, at Peak Tech Germany and they just sent it immediately. These guys are, are, are really nice. Um, there is one thi problem with this one thing. The frequency counter is not that accurate and there is uh, no way you can adjust that. Uh, it has these little uh, oscillator blocks. So we're gonna see if we can replace it maybe with the uh, with proper uh, oscillator or maybe I just have one that is more accurate. So what I just want to show you is I'm putting now exactly 10 megahertz from my uh, lab reference and as you can see it is not and uh, I can leave it on for a bit, but uh, it doesn't improve uh, that much. So it is uh, running on one of these. It's the little bit temperature compensated, I think. Uh, but it, uh, yeah, as you can see, maybe it's because it's just old. It is not that accurate anymore. So uh, I have a few of these and just going to see which one is uh, most precise. But if they are all uh, off, then uh, I'm going to do a different solution. I also have this one, but that uh, probably doesn't fit. And I want to keep it as a spare for my Marconi. But I also do have these vectors. And uh, oh. this. And one of these is uh, in my uh, FTS5 and it was very precise and you can adjust them. So I need to find out uh, how the pins connect. So if I feel good, <laughs> I'm probably going to use this, but sometimes I want easy solutions. So I'm just going to test which one is best of these and then maybe we do that. Not sure yet. Okay, I put in a little uh, breadboard with the oscillators and I'm just going to select uh, which one is the best. So this one is a little bit high, the other one was a little bit low. So let's see what does this one do. Mm, correct way, yes. This one runs also low. This one is almost there. I'm gonna stick with this one. One, two, three, one, two, six hertz. This is one, two, three, this is eight hertz. And it's and it's heating and it's getting better. Okay, we wait for this one. 
Okay, I'm a little bit disappointed about these uh, Chinese oscillators. Not only are they not temperature compensated, also they are not voltage compensated. So I think you can see the frequency counter. I put now five volts, but if I uh, if I increase a little bit, the frequency starts increasing. Well, I'm pretty sure that if you have a proper one, <coughs> that doesn't happen. Uh, oh, I can show you. Um, let's put in another one. Where is my pin one? Yeah. This one is 20, but it uh, is about the idea of the voltage compensation. Um, so here, if I go a little bit up, the frequency doesn't change. Yeah, it changes now a little bit because it's heating. But even if I put my finger or not, it's stable. And if I decrease a little bit the voltage, it doesn't change. And if I put my finger, it doesn't change. Mm? That is that is what a proper oscillator should do. But here is this Chinese thing. Well, I think I pay 50 cents or a euro, so what you expect. But I actually expected a little bit more. Because I put my finger, whoop, it immediately starts to drop. I take my finger out and it starts to rise. But even worse, if I change a little bit the voltage, whoop, the frequency goes. This is a... Uh, well, you could use it for your advantage and, and maybe put a resistor in between and uh, a pot and then you can adjust it. So, I'm not sure. I will. Uh, I'm starting to think that I maybe want to put a, a proper factor on in it. So in the end uh, we were lucky that uh, the oscillator was adjustable in this thing. It was actually the oscillator that was already in here. It was, uh, well this is the cheap one, but it had the screw on the top where you can adjust it. And I uh, just uh, uh, did that. So now we're just uh, spot on. So in the end it was all easy. We didn't need to replace any oscillator. It seems uh, stable enough, so but I do wonder uh, how high it goes. So uh, I was going to put the signal from my signal generator because the Marconi only goes up to uh, one gigahertz. So uh, let's see how high we can go. I put it here. Uh, the signal generator as well is connected to the to my external reference. I can show you if you want. Uh, here in the back you can see. But let's put signal to the other port, change the channel here. And then we can put the gate. That's 190, I would say. And we can put even a bit more, but let's put some more. Let's put 1190. Yes, 1190. Let's put two, two gigahertz. That is 2. Should go to 2.7. So 
Uh, let's be crazy. Let's try three. <laughs> it goes up to three gigahertz. That's cool. And you see, the oscillator is doing fine. So I'm I'm glad I didn't make uh, too big a changes. We just could adjust a screw. And it didn't show in the schematic, so uh, let's see, can we do 3.1? No, now it's missing counts, so yes, it starts to miss counts. So go back to 3. Yes, it does. Okay. So that was a nice test. Yeah, and it's not only a frequency counter, it's also a function generator and you just switch over with the button here and uh, then it starts using the frequency counter for the frequency that you are uh, exporting so we are now around uh, 10k yeah, and as you can see on the oscilloscope that uh, we have uh, a sine wave, we have a square and we have a triangle so it's kind of multi-functional and you can also change a little bit the offset and here you can no, and now it's 50% 50, 50 again so the symmetry and the sweep width and the height but I don't know exactly what that does, but uh, it's multifunctional, so anyway, I'm happy. <laughs> so that's it, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.